creo que tenemos mucho que aprender y rescatar de lo que ha hecho el pueblo maorí y, y el pueblo neozelandés en materia de integración y reconocimiento de eh, la cultura maorí y cómo eh, han de verdad dado eh, cambios sustantivos y cualitativos en la integración, en el desarrollo político, económico, social de eh, una cultura que es eh, obviamente relevante e importante. Eh, no se ha quedado solo un reconocimiento, la verdad es que cuando uno revisa los datos, las cifras, las estadísticas y escucha eh, a eh, quienes han estado hoy día traspasándonos todo este esta riqueza desde el punto de vista del avance en, en Nueva Zelanda, uno dice, bueno, eh, no son solo declaraciones, la verdad es que no, no hay solo declaración de intención, aquí de verdad ha habido una integración y una, un desarrollo de una política pública eh, de reconocimiento pleno. Yo creo que tenemos mucho que aprender eh, y muchas lecciones que sacar de esto. Eh, por lo tanto, el desafío es enorme. En medio de la discusión de la ley de pesca, de la discusión que estamos teniendo por eh, el tema forestal, creo que, y del 169, eh, creo que de verdad hay mucha, mucha experiencia positiva. Yo lo, lo puse como tema eh, en una columna de opinión, de hecho, creo que tenemos que hacer eh, un, un esfuerzo para darle representación a nuestros pueblos originarios en el Parlamento e incluso establecer un Parlamento consultivo para eh, los temas del Convenio 169. By and large, Maori have had access to um, the state education system, uh, but uh, for the 19th century and most of the 20th century, um, Maori had to learn what uh, all other people learned. There was nothing specifically, uniquely Maori about it. Uh, but uh, since the 1950s and 60s, um, Maori language became accepted as a language for universities. Uh, Maori language uh, so was introduced in universities, but there was very little Maori language in schools, primary and secondary. And then that began to change after the 1970s, um, and uh, so we have Maori language schools, we have Maori language in state schools, uh, and Maori language is now uh, one of the official languages, one of the three official languages, English, sign language, and Maori. So that's changed the dynamic. Um, Maori in university started off very slowly from 1900, uh, and by 1940 the numbers were very small, but since then they've grown dramatically. Still not enough, but I'll give you one example. 18 years ago, a group of Maori academics uh, set a goal of 500 Maori with PhDs, and that number has been achieved in neuroscience, uh, astronomy, uh, engineering, anthropology, economics, uh, biology, genetics, everywhere. And we have a new goal of another 500 PhDs. Underneath the PhDs, more Maori are doing the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Commerce, and so on and so forth. The number is still not good enough. We need a greater proportion, uh, but uh, we dramatic changes have taken place um, in the last 20 or 30 years. I represent 150 Māori authorities from across the country. Uh, we have uh, $8 billion worth of assets uh, in primary sector, so uh, forestry, fishing, uh, farming, as well as geothermal, energy, uh, commercial property and tourism. The Māori economy is currently uh, estimated at $36.9 billion. So we represent about a good quarter of that. There are three things uh, that have been instrumental in repositioning Māori as a nation, as an indigenous people within New Zealand. It's political voice and influence, it has been education, and it has been the return of our assets, our lands and our interests. Those three points have given us the uh, political motivation, the qualifications and the skills as well as an asset base from which to recreate our own economic wealth and well-being. We have an excellent relationship with our government. There is always room for improvement, uh, but we have direct opportunity to consult with our government to influence policy and strategic positioning of our nation. And it has been a long struggle over time for our people, but we are now in a place where we feel like uh, we can build and grow in terms of the quality of life of our people. As Māori, what we have done is we have been um, clear about 
the fact that we have never ceded our sovereignty or our rights. And so what we have been able to do is start to look at how we influence the direction of our policy and that has been important. The other thing too is that we are clear as a Māori nation, as indigenous peoples, is that if we have economic wealth, if we have political power, if we are well educated and well qualified, then we are more likely to address our own social and economic issues and be less of a burden on our government. In New Zealand we are really clear that what is good for Māori is good for our nation and that's certainly something that our government has also maybe over the last 15 or 20 years, also understood.